Good day. We are group 2 in week 4. And we are here to discuss how we conduct our frequency distribution table. Here are the main points we've wanted to discuss about. About the data. Arraying the data. Solving data for frequency table. And lastly, the frequency table itself. Before we start, always remember, mathematics is the art of giving the same name to different things by Henry Poincaré. About the data, our teacher assigned us to conduct a grouping consist of four members and make a frequency distribution table. From that four members, they'll give their respective grades in first semester to their group leader. As we've all known, one person in my group unable to give his grades in the first semester. That's why I picked up the given data named for a group of three members given by our teacher. After we gather our data, we must proceed to the arraying of our data. In arraying the data, we need to list the grades in lowest to highest form, like this. So as you can see, 68 is the lowest, 97 is the highest. If we count all of our listed data or grades, the total number of them is the n, or total number of data. In our data, the n in our total number of data is 45, because if we count all of our listed data, 45 is the answer. After we array the data, we must proceed to solving the frequency distribution table. In solving for table, we need this step because in order for us to make a frequency distribution table, we need the numbers who are portrayed in the solving. The first step is solving the range. How do we solve the range? Range is the difference between the highest and the lowest score. The highest score is acting as minuend while the lowest score is the subtrend. Highest score minus lowest score is equal to range. In our selection, the highest score was 97 and the lowest score is 68.97 minus 68 is equal to 29. That's why 29 is the range of our data. The class size is our second step. So how do we get the class size? In getting the class size, we need to multiply first 3.320 log to the n or the total number of the data after we get the product. We need to add it to 1 in order for us to get the class size. In our data, the n or the total number of data is 45. To put it bluntly, 3.320 log multiplied by 45 is 5.4 5 5.4919719771 5 plus 1 is equals to 6.4919791971 and we need to round off this number that's why the class size is 6 the last step in solving is the interval how do we get the interval interval is the quotient of range in class size Range is acting as the dividend, while class size is the de divisor. Range divided into class size is equal to interval. In our selection, the range was 29 and the class size was 6. To put it bluntly, 29 divided into 6 is 4.83. And we need to round off this number. That's why the interval is 5. When we say round off, we need to upsize the number even though the number next to it is lower than 5. And also, the number next to it doesn't even really matter. After we finish the solving for the frequency distribution table, we must proceed in naming it. In naming the frequency distribution ta table, you can be witty as you want and also you can be creative at the same time. For example, Grade, grades of the student grades of students who those their assignments at last minute for sure you can relate to it because because all of us now are claiming and also doing their assignment 
at the last minute. We, we mean if the deadline is today, you will work on it today also. After we concluded the most creative name of our frequency distribution table, we can now proceed at the table itself. Our table will be explained by Mr. Cruz and Mr. Castillo in order for you to understand it more clearly, concise and also upsize. About the frequency distribution table. A frequency distribution table is a graphic that represents value and the frequency with which they occur. If you have a list of integers that indicate the frequency of a specific result in a sample, it is handy approach to organize data. The first column in our frequency distribution table is the classes. So how do we get classes? Classes is consist of intervals. That's why the interval first before we can make classes. In gathering the interval, we only need is the lowest score and after that we can count numbers to follow in guiding by the interval. In our data, the interval is 5 and the lowest score is 68. From 68, we can count on 5 including 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. That's why our first class is 68 to 72. And if you will do the same to others until you get the class size you need. In our data, the class size is 6. That's why we have 68 to 72, 73 to 77, 78 to 82, 83 to 87, 88 to 92, and lastly, 93 to 97. After we got the classes column, we can now proceed to the frequency. In gathering frequency, we will be needing the data again, and also we are looking out at the classes. The first class in our table is 68 to 72. Therefore, we'll need to find the numbers in our data that are in the range of numbers from 68 to 72. In our data, we have five frequencies in the first class. And you will do the same to others until you get all the frequencies in accordance to class size. After we know how to gather classes and frequencies, we must proceed to getting the class mark. In order for us to get the class mark, we need to add the class lower interval and the higher interval. After we got the answer, we should divide it on into two. Class lower interval plus class higher interval is equal to and divide it in into two. In getting the class mark of our first class, we should cite the first class lower and higher interval. In our data, 68 is the lower while 72 is the higher. 62 plus the 72 is equal to 134. 134 divided by 2 is equal to 70. To put it bluntly, class marks are getting the average of the first class lower interval and the class higher interval. And you will do the same to the others until you get all the class marks in accordance with class size. After we know how to get the other class marks, we must proceed to getting the lower class boundaries. In getting the lower class boundaries, we need to cite the class lower interval first and minus it on 0 0.5. In our data, class lower interval is 68. Therefore, 68 minus 0 0.5 is 67.5. Generally speaking, 67.5 is the lower class boundary of our first class. And you will do the same to others until you get the lower class boundaries in accordance with class size. In accordance to lower class boundaries is the upper class boundary. In getting the upper class boundaries, we need to cite the class higher interval and add it to 0 
In our data, class higher interval is 72. Therefore, 72 plus 0 0.5 is 72.5. To put it bluntly, 72.5 is the upper class boundary of our first class, and you will do the same to the others until you get all the upper class. In accordance with the class size. After we know how to gather class boundaries, we must proceed to getting the less than cumulative frequency. In getting the less than cumulative frequency, we need to cite the frequency itself. This process is the frequency adding to another less than cumulative frequency then. Less than cumulative frequency is adding the lower number of frequency to the higher frequency then. As you can see, we copy the first frequency to become our first less than cumulative frequency. And the first less than cumulative frequency adding to the second class frequency to become the second less than cumulative frequency. And so on and so forth. You will do the same to others until you get all the less than cumulative frequency in accordance with frequency. After we got the less than, cumul less than cumulative frequency column, we can now proceed to the greater than cumulative frequency column. Greater than cumulative frequency is the opposite of less than cumulative frequency. Just like the less than cumulative frequency, we need to cite the frequency again. But this time, we start with the highest frequency. As you can see, we copy the 6 to become our 6 greater than cumulative frequency. And the 6 greater than cumulative frequency adding to the 5th class frequency to become the 5th greater than cumulative frequency. And so on and so forth. You will do the same to others until you get all the greater than cumulative frequency in accordance with frequency. I have a trivia about less than cumulative frequency and greater than cumulative frequency. To check if your both cumulative frequencies are just in the right state, the last cumulative frequency you are solving should end up being equal to the data's n or the data's total number of data. After we know how to gather cumulative frequencies, we must proceed to getting the relative frequency and percentage relative frequency. In getting the relative frequency, we should divide the frequency into the n, or the total number of data. As simple as that. In our data, frequency is 5 and the n on the total number of data is 45. The number of the frequency is changing depending on their class size. 5 divided by 2 to 45 is equal to 0 0.1111111111. And we need to round off, so it must be 0 0.1111. We will do the same to the others until you get all the relative frequency in accordance with frequency. In accordance with relative frequency, we can also get the percentage relative frequency. In finding the percentage relative frequency, we can get this by citing the relative frequency that we saw earlier and discussed by is truly older. If we successfully find the relative frequency, then we can convert into percentage so we can get the percentage relative frequency. How to convert a number to a percentage? There are two ways that we know. The first way is the calculator. You can, you can simply input the number that you want to do, convert, convert, and just simply multiply it into 100. And therefore, the answer to it is the percentage of number you wanted to convert. With. Just simply add the percentage sign at the end of the number. The second way is moving the decimal point to two decimal points. Just like that, I said earlier, just simply add the percentage sign at the end of the number. After we discuss on how we did our frequency table, now it's your turn. I'm John Carl Cruz. I'm Audrey Castillo. I'm Michael Cotas. I'm Christian Jewish Custodio. We are the group 2.